when you're struggling, when it seems not to be paying off down here, when you're being ridiculed, when you are not getting ahead in life, have you ever asked the question, is it really worth it to serve God? Is it really worth it to obey God? Is it really worth it to remain faithful to God? Is it really worth it to stay humble before God? Is it really worth it to live each and every day for God? Well, if you've asked these questions out loud or in your heart, you're not the only one who has asked questions like this. The people of Malachi's day asked the same questions and the Lord had an answer to these questions for them and for us. I want to invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to Malachi chapter number 3. Malachi chapter number 3. And let's begin reading this morning with verse number 13. Malachi chapter 3 and beginning at verse number 13. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. If you're wondering how to get there, go to Matthew's Gospel and then just turn back a page or two and you'll be at Malachi chapter 3 verse 13. If you don't have a copy with you of the scriptures, feel free to follow along on our screens. Malachi 3 and verse 13, the Bible says, Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, What have we spoken against you? You have said it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept His ordinance? and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts. So now we call the proud blessed, for those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord, and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, and on that day I make them my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Chapter 4, verse 1, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble, and the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Notice in verse number 13, the Lord tells them, these people of Malachi's day, that they have been speaking harshly. They've been speaking terrible things. They've been saying cruel things about the Lord. And in response, these people said in verse 14, What have we said? And the Lord says back to them, You've said that it is useless to serve God. The word useless there means vain, pointless, empty, a waste of time and energy, and worthless. They also mentioned on and down in the, the next, the same verse there. 
they were saying, what profit is it? What gain, what benefit, what payment is it for living in accordance to God's word and his desires? They even said in verse 15 to the Lord, Lord, we see how the, the proud, the wicked, those who are living against your word, how that they are blessed and how that they continue to live this way, tempting you. Yet it seems, Lord, that you let them go free and unpunished. So you see in verse number 14 and verse 15, they were essentially saying to the Lord, it's worthless, it's useless to serve you. They were asking, Lord, is it really worth it to honor you? Is it really worth it to obey you? Lord, is it really worth it to serve you? And in verses 16 through chapter 4, verse 3, the Lord gives them a response explaining to them that it is really worth it to serve the Lord. And I want to speak on that title this morning, It Is Worth It. It is worth it to serve the Lord. And let me make this morning to you several comments from this passage so that you will know how that it is really worth it to serve the Lord. First of all, I want to say this morning, it's really worth it to serve the Lord because He will remember you and all that you've done for him. Did you notice in verse number 16, those who feared him, those who respected him, those who lived in reverential awe of him, the Lord listens to them. He hears them. The idea is the Lord was paying attention and watching what they were saying and doing. He was taking note of what they were saying. Here Malachi tells us that for those of us who fear him, he not only listens and pays attention to us, what we say and do, but he has a book of remembrance as well. Here the text tells us that there's a book there before the Lord, a book with our names written down in it, a book with our feelings about him, a book with our thoughts about Him, a book that tells of the things that we've done for Him. In Exodus 32, 32 and 33, Moses spoke of a record book that the Lord has with the names of those who belong to Him. Psalms 69 and verse 28, David spoke of this book, a book of the living where the names of the righteous are written down in the book of the Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 chapter 17 verse 8 chapter 20 and verse 15 the apostle John wrote how that at the end of time the book of life with the names of the righteous will be opened up there before the Lord you see Malachi wants us to know that for us who fear God, those of us who love God, those of us who serve and obey Him, He has a record book, a record book with your name in it, a record book keeping record of all the things that you've done for Him, the words that you've said to honor and please Him, and those wonderful thoughts that you thought about Him. He keeps a record book. You know, you may do things down here and it may go unnoticed by human beings, but anything you do for Him, it will never go unnoticed. He keeps a record book. He's taking note and watching of us. You know, the Persians, they kept record books like this. As a matter of fact, in the book of Esther, chapter number 6, the Bible tells how the king of Persia, Ahasuerus, how that he couldn't sleep one night. And so he commanded that a servant bring to him that book of records, that book of remembrance about what the people had done. 
And so this servant brought the book in there before the king and he began to read that book to the king and the servant read to the king about a man by the name of Mordecai and how Mordecai heard of two of the king's servants who were plotting against the king to kill him and Mordecai stood up for the king and went and warned the king. He did something good for the king. When King Ahasuerus heard about this and he heard that read, he said, what kind of honor can we give to this man Mordecai for what he's done for me? Has anyone done anything? What can we do? And the servant said, nothing has been done. And so the king said, let's honor Mordecai. Let's honor him by allowing him to wear the royal robe and ride on the king's horse through the people. And let's have someone proclaiming out loud words of honor and recognition for Mordecai. Now folks, just like King Ahasuerus, the God of all eternity, he has a record book of all that you've done for him. And just think if King Ahasuerus, an earthly king, can keep records and honor those who serve him. Just think how much the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is keeping accurate records of you and me. And it will not go unnoticed. And it will be remembered. And one day you'll be recognized by him. Is it really worth it to serve God? Is it really worth it to live for God? Is it really worth it to submit to God's will? Yes, it is because God is listening. Yes, it is because God is watching. Yes, it is because God is paying attention. Yes, it is because God is keeping a record. And yes, it is because God eventually will one day reward you for what you thought about Him And done for him. Galatians 6 and 9 tells us, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. It is worth it to serve the Lord because he will remember you and all that you've done for him. But number two, I want to say something else from our text. It's worth it to serve the Lord because he will set the record straight about who really belongs to him. One day he will set the record straight. Look at verse number 15. The people of Malachi's day were upset. They were looking around them. They were looking at their neighbor. They were looking at people they worked with. And they looked at these people and they were upset because it appeared as if these proud, rebellious, wicked, sinful people were being blessed. It looked like the wicked were advancing in life. It looked like the wicked were getting by and going unpunished for how they were acting and living towards God. You see, now in this life, it may seem that the way of the righteous is one of suffering and the way of the wicked is one of prospering. However, folks, one day God will set the record straight. One day God is going to open the books and He's going to call into account what He has recorded. One day God will reveal those who are wicked and those who are really His. Look at verses 17 and 18. Malachi writes, He says, They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve God. I want to tell you this morning, you may not have a lot of treasures down here, but you are a treasure to the Lord if you serve Him. You're a treasure to him. The Lord says they shall be mine. They will be my jewels. The word jewels there in the text has the idea of a special possession, a special treasure that belonged to a king or a ruler. This idea of God's people being a special possession goes back as well in the Old Testament. 
In Exodus 19 verse 5, the Lord said to his people, You shall be a special treasure to me above all the people of the earth. In Matthew 13 verses 44 through 46, the Lord Jesus tells two parables, the parable of the treasure and the parable of the pearl of great price. And in those two parables... He speaks of how special we are to the Lord and all that He has done to obtain us as His special possessions. In Titus 2 and verse 14 and 1 Peter 2 and 9, the Bible speaks of God's people being a special people, a peculiar people who belong to Him. I understand that in this life it may be challenging at times to see that we're special to the Lord, especially as we endure troubles in this life and as we endure the unjustness of this world. But one day God will set the record straight. You see, He knows who belongs to Him. He values them, He loves them, He saved them. And verse 17 tells us that one day on the day of judgment, the great day of the Lord, He'll spare those who belong to Him. And at that moment that He spares them, it will be clear those who really belong to Him. Notice verse 18, he said, You shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. In other words, one day we'll see the difference. God will make it possible to distinguish between the wicked and the righteous, between those who serve him and those who haven't really served him. It will be clear one day. God will set the record straight. He'll unveil his jewels, his children, his servants, the righteous, and they shall be His forever and ever. You say, what will it look like when the Lord Jesus one day distinguishes between the righteous and the wicked, between those who've served Him and those who haven't served Him? Well, turn with me, hold your place there to Ma in Matthew's Gospel. Over to, uh, let's turn over to Matthew chapter number 25. Matthew chapter Number 25. And I want you to listen to this account from Jesus. He explains this to us. Matthew 25. And we'll begin the reading with verse 31. Matthew 25 and verse number 31. Jesus is speaking. He says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory... And all the holy angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate them one from another. As a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand. But the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand. Come you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you, a stranger, and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me. You cursed and into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they, will also, they also will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? 
Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Do you see that? Is it really worth it to repent? Is it really worth it to believe in and commit your life to the Lord? Is it really worth it now to serve Him? Is it really worth it? Yes, it's worth it. It's not only worth it now, but brother, you better guarantee it will be worth it one day in eternity. It will be worth it one day when we stand before the Lord. It will be worth it when earth is no more and we stand before the judge of all the earth. It will be worth it on that day if you served Him or not. And then I want to make one more comment, a third comment. It is really worth it to serve the Lord because He'll bring deliverance someday soon. Now look in chapter 4 here. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Matthew, uh, excuse me, Malachi. Uh, by the way, somebody described Malachi as the Italian prophet and they called him Malachi. Now that's not accurate, but I heard somebody tell that one time. But anyway, that's, that's a freebie. So under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Malachi continues to tell of that future day when the Lord Jesus will return. When he returns, Malachi says he's not returning as a meek and gentle lamb, but as a roaring lion. He will return, as verse 1 describes, with fiery judgment burning up all those who live wicked lives. He will leave no one behind and no one will be overlooked. But then look at verses 2 and 3. He now speaks to those of us who fear his name, who reverence him, who have a deep respect for him who want to honor them with our thoughts and our words and our lives he says to those who fear his name he says the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings the bible likens the lord jesus to a son psalms 84 11 says for the lord god is a son and a shield here Malachi is speaking of a glorious golden time in the future when the sun will rise in all his radiant glory just like when the S-U-N rises up in the morning. Malachi tells us that when the S-O-N rises, he will have healing in his wings. That's a promise that one day our deliverance, our day of deliverance will hold ultimate, complete, permanent healing for our bodies, soul, mind, and lives. Ultimate healing. Jesus will bring deliverance over disease, sickness, pain, trouble of the mind. Also notice here Malachi tells us that when Jesus returns, we'll enjoy liberty and freedom. Uh, I know some of you have uh, kept uh, cows or horses before in a stall for a period of time. And you know when you keep that animal in the stall for a period of time and then you open the door and you let them go into the pasture while they're jumping and skipping and running and hopping, Ever which way? Well, that's the picture Malachi uses. He describes us how we'll grow fat like stalled calves and we'll come out trampling the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. Deliverance. You see, one day when Jesus returns, He'll deliver us from the bondage of this world and the bondage of these mortal bodies. He will deliver us from the pressures of this life which hinder us from fully serving Him as we would like. Then notice that when Jesus returns, we'll experience complete victory over the wicked. The wicked sometimes like to discourage us from serving Christ. The wicked that would like to silence us from speaking of Christ. The wicked that would like to stop us from living a life of obedience to Christ one day will be defeated and stopped not by us and our power but by the Lord Jesus. At the end of verse number 3 the Lord says On the day that I do this says the Lord of hosts What day is he speaking of? 
He's speaking of that grand, good, glad, golden day when Jesus returns to earth again as King of kings and Lord of lords. I read a story about a preacher in 1934. He was a pioneer radio preacher from California. His name was Carl Blackmore. And he had just preached a series of sermons on the second coming of Christ. And a few days later, he received a letter in the mail. And as he opened up this letter, this woman begins to tell him her story, how that she has been bedridden for over 20 years. She asked this preacher, Will I really be well? Will all my pain and sorrow actually be gone? And the preacher Blackmore replied, Dear friend, all your suffering and pain will be over. You'll have a new body. Arms and legs that are missing will be replaced. Friend, will be like Jesus. You will have a glorified body someday, some golden daybreak when Jesus comes again. A couple of days later, early in the morning, that preacher woke up and he began meditating and thinking about the second coming of Christ, thinking of how he's the son of righteousness that one day will rise with healing in his wings for his people. And Blackmore sat down at his desk and he penned these words, Some golden daybreak Jesus will come. Some golden daybreak battles will all be won. He'll shout the victory. He'll break through the blue. Some golden daybreak for me and for you. Just think about it, folks. The Father one day is going to tell the Son, It's time. And when He returns, we will be delivered from the long night of sin's darkness. We'll be delivered from the cold winter of human misery. We'll be delivered from the dark valleys of opposition towards Christianity. And on that day, it will be worth it when Jesus comes again. It will be worth it when we see His face. It will be worth it when we experience ultimate and complete deliverance. Yes, the sufferings of this life are temporary, but eternity is forever and forever. That's why I want to serve Him with all of my heart and all of my mind in this day and hour, in this life, in this world, in this short span, no matter what the cost, so that one day I can stand before Him, honoring Him and glorifying Him forever. And forever. Is it worth it serving the Lord? Are you battling? Are you struggling? Are you questioning whether or not it's worth it to serve Him? Is it worth it to continue obeying Him? Is it con worth it continuing to live for Him? It is worth it. He remembers those who belong to Him. He'll set the record straight one day. He'll separate and make a distinction. And he'll be, bring deliverance to his own one day. I pray this morning that the Lord will fill each of your hearts with assurance that it is worth it to serve him. Let's stand to our feet. They're coming to get a hymn of invitation. If you have a burden in your heart and life you'd like to come and pray about, feel free to come and do that. I'd be glad to pray with you. Maybe you need to come and rededicate your life to the Lord and your service to Him and say, Jesus, I've been struggling, but I realize this morning it is worth it. No matter the struggle, no matter the trial, no matter the pain, it's worth it to serve you. And I rededicate my service back to you. Would you do that this morning? Would there be one you need to be saved? I invite you to come. If the Holy Spirit's speaking to your heart and you've never been saved, you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you've never bowed your knee and your heart to Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, would you do that today? If God's speaking to your heart, would you be willing to step out and come and give your heart to Jesus?